Well, good morning. It's Wednesday morning, about uh, 20 to 8 in the morning, getting a little earlier start than usual. Thought I'd come out here and take a look at this uh, 72 Triumph. Uh, had a 2 a.m. epiphany, and then I read the comments on the YouTube channel, and we all agree that um, these pipes are press in. They don't screw in. They don't, they're not threaded. They just press right in. And they're theoretically held in by the clamp down below, down here, and the exhaust system back here. And um, it's a terrible system. It really is. Uh, just, just horrible. So anyway, um, the first thing I did was I came out here and I'll show you. Watch this pipe closely when I start moving the uh, <coughs> the muffler and the pipe. And let's see. I could move it. There you go. Hmm. Okay, there. I grab it down here. See that moving? So it's it's not tight. So I'm going to try to tighten it up. Okay. Now that's interesting. This is the side that has the blued pipe, which, by the way, it came into the shop with the pipe blued. So this may have happened a long time ago, and whatever caused it may have been fixed, and the pipe just not replaced. So that we don't know that. I don't know that. I've asked the client for history. We'll see what it says. Okay, so anyway, I'm gonna tighten this pipe up. Shouldn't be that, shouldn't be that loose. But that's interesting, this is the side with the blue pipe. If we could walk around here. And set the under camera up like so. This is the pipe on the right side, and it's worse. Whoa, look at that. I mean, it was, it was sticking out. So um, I'm going to tighten this side up also. So interestingly, this is the worst of the two, and the other one is the one that's blued. So anyway, <clears throat> I'm going to tighten up this exhaust system, and um, I'm going to start the bike, and then I'm going to spray the intake manifold uh, with carb cleaner to see if it affects the running of the engine, indicating that it's sucking air. And after that, um, think more about it. It's a brand new carb. It's a nice, um, one of the nice new uh, Amels. And um, I might look into that to see if I can get the bike to run a little bit better and stop popping and spitting on that left side. That's where we are. That's what I'm going to do. Well, this is interesting. As I walked around the bike, I looked down and saw a puddle of oil down here. And it's come down the tie down. So I got up here and I, I'll get my clean hand, did this. And it's coming out of this fork. The fork seal is blown. Look at that. So that's something else. Since I love to take this front wheel off and loosen up this brake assembly, uh, I'll tell the client that um, fork seals are probably a really good idea. Let's walk around and see the other side. I'll get a clean paper towel here. This is just dirt. Not oil. This side's okay. It's just a little dirt here, not, not oil. Let's go back over here. I have to warm these up to get them. Anyway, so that much oil on the ground under here. There's a little worried for reason. Look at the oil going down here. It's not the first time. You can tell these things are practically oil soaked, but this is fresh. 
things you notice. All right, I got the exhaust pipes off. Uh, they're pretty grody. Grody, that's a, um, a scientific t technical term. Uh, yeah, those are pretty grody. Um, ends are sort of nasty. These adapters uh, go uh, over the pipe, or into the pipe, over the pipe. They're kind of nasty. And um, they have to go this way so that they will fit into the ends of the mufflers. Okay, so I will clean all this stuff up and start putting this back together. Uh, in the meantime, I spent some time over here and I've cleaned out the ports, got all the carbon out of there, so they're nice and clean. And uh, the effort continues. I'll put it back together and bolt everything down tight. Well, I've said many times that the um, process of cleaning motorcycle parts is um, basically a process of transference. You transfer the dirt and grease and grime and crud and corruption from the parts uh, to your hands. So um, these parts are now cleaned. I've cleaned both ends of the pipes, the inserts, the clamps, the clamps, uh, basically ready to put this these these bits and pieces back on the bike all right uh this is uh, basically guaranteed to get me some commentary uh i'm going to do something uh half of you won't believe in i'm going to do it anyway red high temperature rtv now i said many times i really dislike rtv silicon but in this case i like it a lot so I'm going to take a nice fingerful, stick it in this port. Hope you can see over my shoulder, like so. I'm going to go down here and put it on the outside of this guy. Slide him in here. I'm going to put it on the end of the exhaust pipe. And just to make sure, I'm going to put it on the exhaust pipe itself. Now, it will not melt. It will not do damage. It will not do all the bad things you're imagining. It just sits in there and seals. This is high temperature red. And believe it or not, I think these ports run around 600 degrees. They're just not that hot. We're not talking about thousands of degrees, believe it or not. And when I start the bike, I'll do a temperature check and um, try to verify that. So anyway, what I did here, I gave this guy a smack. He's now bent back this way. So when this goes in and I put that bolt in, it's going to be pulling the pipe into the head. All right. Now, all I have to do is clean the silicone off my finger and start bolting things down. I'm going to put some nice fresh bolts in here because the bolts that were in there were junk. Let's see if these are long enough. No, nope, I'm going to use, use them longer enough. There's about a half inch gap there, and I want that much. I want it to pull in hard.
All right, let's uh, tighten that one down. Nice and tight. Good and tight. Okay, let's do the one down here. All right. Now this is just, this little collar here doesn't do anything at all. It looked decorative. They say it's for heat dissipation. I don't believe them. I think it's just decorative. Right up against there. Silly little screwdriver holding it together. Let's see, what size is that? Not bigger than that. <sighs> I can't get that in there, so screwdriver is it. And that's not going to help. So that's as tight as it goes. Okay. This is tight. And it's not going anywhere. So I'm going to go do the other side. And believe me, high temp silicon is okay. Does a good job. All right. We've got both exhaust systems on and tight. They really are. They're nice and tight. I mean, seriously tight that's 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 beautiful okay both sides nice and tight siliconed all over the place i know you don't like it but it works and siliconed all over the place over here good and tight and uh, no movement so uh, what we're going to do for no real reason at all is take this bike down and put it over here to the side i'm going to let it sit for until tomorrow 24 hours just to let that silicon set I don't know if it's really necessary or not, but that's what I usually do when I use silicon on a surface like this. I let it set overnight before I start the bike. So we're going to take this guy down, put him off to the side. We're going to go over and get this beautiful polished cafe racer and stick it up on the lift and pull the um, timing cover off and send it down to AMR in Tucson to have the AMR mod done. Uh, we're still waiting for the Speedo on the yellow one. The Norton, we're going to have this one transported over to the custom seat maker to have a seat made for it. And when it comes back, then we will go right back to the no starting situation. What is this one? Oh, this one's here for isoelastics. That's probably going to take us a while to get to. And then this Beezer's over here with a no start and a double check. So plenty to do. And we're going to get started on this pretty bike just to get the process started while we wait for the new handlebars and other things we've ordered. So that's what we're doing. That's where we are.